mainstream media exists for the purposes of indoctrination and manipulation of public perception. The world of free and independent media is growing, and with the upsurge in information now available in the public domain, it has never been easier to access free and independent media. The exploration of this information resulted in an experimental project which would provide a fully supported space for researchers, whistleblowers and seekers of all kinds to express themselves and educate the world. On the 1st of January 2015, Conscious Consumer Network was launched to the world. Nobody thought we would make it this far, but CCN is the longest running free and independent media network of its kind. CCN is a unique collaboration of hearts and souls, bringing you information from different perspectives to educate and inform. Since we started CCN, we have had only one desire, the pursuit of a free, fair, just, sustainable world. And this has not changed. Having overcome many challenges over the last two years, CCN is here to stay and we've got great things lined up for 2017. It's all right to be just a little bit crazy. Being creative is being a little bit crazy in just the right vibration. With that in mind, you should understand God's completely insane. An educational comedy. It's not a cause, not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on. It's, it's an, an idea. idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. A genuine expression. A certain Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, three egos are bound to be bruised. It's our silly, zany, politically incorrect. Your own Gilbert style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be you to the fullest. Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. I am uh, giving you this intro from my my pond room. Yes, we also have a pondscape channel, and um, normally you'd be used to you know seeing uh, this sort of a view from the from the pondscape channel. But I just decided maybe uh, a little bit of uh, a change of scenery to you know something more nature, more hydroponic, more pretty. You've got all the flowers and everything, and we got fish and all that. So, just trying to spice it up a little bit. Um, although, speaking of the the uh, birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees, um, what this particular um, PSEC episode is going to be about is um, I'm going to be uh, featuring... Katarina and um, Paul Royce 
um, money, power, sex segments. Um, they have their own YouTube channel, which is for discussing the, the topics of money, power, sex in a very real, raw, open, and honest way. You know, nothing, you know, stupid or immature or whatever, but, you know, just kind of being being real about these topics because, you know, obviously a lot of people, especially adults, tend to act like squeamish little fucking 12 year olds, no offense to actual 12 year olds, in the face of these topics because they can be extremely freaking triggering. So, um, I want to give you you guys in this, um, this, uh, PSEC, uh, CCN, you know, special edition broadcast here, I want to give you guys, um, a bit of a sneak peek of, um, what their channel's about. Seeing as both Paul and Katarina are a part of the PSEC crew, and PSEC is a part of uh, CCN, um, and Pondscape is a, a part of uh, PSEC Media. So, you know, there you go. We're all one big, happy, fun, loving social media family over here. Um, but yeah, wanted to, uh, to give you guys a preview of that. And um, though YouTube has not allowed them to have their own official channel name yet because they're a bit Naziistic, uh, we used to be able to just have a channel name just channel name just by default to be in the uh, YouTube Partners program. But you know what? Now they won't even let you do that because YouTube is a bunch of Naziistic bastards. And now I guess you have to have your channel for a certain amount of time and uh, approval rating and whatever and blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, you get the typical, you know, forward slash channel, forward slash XYZ, AB3123, whatever. A big, long URL. Stupid thing, and it's not the estate, but it is what it is and whatever. So, I'm going to show you some Money Power Sex episodes that they have. And I'm also going to mix and match that with uh, some various uh, PSEC content that both um, Paul Roy and Katarina Roy have uh, participated in in the past. So we're going to kind of mix and match it a little so you can, um, you know, get a preview of Money Power Sex and please go and subscribe to that. And, you know, you can also see um, some things that both Paul and Katarina have done within, you know, the realms of, of PSEC and, you know, to make it fit a bit more into this, uh, you know, um, paradigm shift in educational comedy, CCN, Conscious Consumer Network, special edition episode. So... Without further ado, here we go, and as we, as we fade out, I'll just, you know, give you a little, little more view of, of the beautiful hydroponic, aquaponic setup that we got go, going on here. Oh, and we're fading out. Although some people are awake, there still seems to me that, I know this is controversial, so I'm just going to say it right out. If you have a passion, you're not awake. That's, that's what I yeah. do, okay? You can't claim to be an awake and aware person and lack compassion. So, for example, yes, there are people, you know, um, and, and, and there's there's lots to be said about this and that and the next, but there's compassionate ways in which to go about it rather than attacking. And we as a society, and I've noticed this program, and it's so sad because you've got a lot of these truth, mo um, truth uh, speakers, truth seekers waking up, coming into this movement and, you know, jumping into the communication mix on various social media platforms. And they've got what I call the Jesuit punitive programming, okay, which is um, if someone's done something bad, you know, oh, 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 they must be punished, even if it's a verbal lashing. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm thinking that it really is about isolating this punitive aspect of our thinking of, you know, um, damage and retribution you know if, if you're in pain you've got to seek vengeance kind of thing and there is mm. very much this thing inside the human psyche um yeah. and i suppose it does take a lot of uh calm discipline i don't know yogi awareness whatever you want to call it sort of, you know certain silence whatever you have to do to rid yourself of that anger and come to a place where you know even though you've been hurt you don't project your pain onto others rather you show compassion and empathy for the pain of others because you've suffered too yeah. That for me is awareness. Okay, it's not you know uh, let's get our pitchforks out and let's go you know kill these guys because they're yeah. bad. Don't forget the don't forget the fake positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm positive. See, don't you dare tell me otherwise, or you're of a low frequency. <laughs> he is attached to you. If you tell me I'm not positive, oh. you know exactly. 
I, I get this all the time with where people say, oh, why do you focus on such negative stuff? Because you know, a lot of the work we do is exposing the darkness. And I love your what you said there. It's not that I, I focus on the darkness. I'm a very happy, positive person because guess what? I shine light into dark places. For me, that's a positive, positive, positive. That's not a negative, negative, negative. It is absolutely about putting positive into a bad situation to manifest a positive outcome, which hopefully is awareness of the situation. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, it's <laughs> on anyway. It doesn't matter. Hey, what's happening there, Facebook friends? Hey, everybody. We are just, uh, we're just announcing something really cool that we're doing that, uh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. We've kind of been. A I'm little nervous bit... and excited at the same time. You guys, bear with me. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been talking about this for a while, like behind the scenes. But honestly, both of us have been a little bit scared to do it because it is just so in line with both of our life purposes. And it yeah. feels so taboo. And it does. We're gonna do taboo stuff, like as as if our lives are not completely taboo already. As if all the amazing stuff that we do all the time it's is so out of the norm. Is and like. So like yeah foreign so yeah so we're just gonna we're just announcing it we're just gonna do it and we are going to be setting up a private group where we talk about relationships where we talk about our relationship and what makes us so happy, happy so able to live all of our dreams all the damn time well and more than that, just like how we're able to do it and be happy together. Right. Because you know. we are so powerful together. I mean, we have an amazing, amazing relationship that everybody who knows us asks us how we do it. And you know what? We've been a bit scared to talk about that because it is not PG-13. It's not, guys. It's not. Like, it is taboo. <laughs> It's risque. It's risque. I mean, that just the we, we we have a we have a relationship where we have we just have a really healthy relationship with our money. Our money is so easy; it, it comes to us so easily. We we just <clears throat> we just embody this 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 whole sense of ease, and we're very very powerful people. Like the both of us are just frighteningly powerful, and we hide it from the world. And when we're together, we mirror it to each other. Oh, and it's man. just like supernovas. It, it's we, crazy. It, yeah. Like we have audio recordings of our conversations that are nuts. Like bl mind blowing. Mind blowing. Like. Yeah. Anyway, we've been, yeah. we've been really scared to unleash this on the world because honestly, we think that we're already like halfway out of most people's comfort zone just by ourselves. Yeah, even when we try to keep it under wraps, even yeah. when we try to like box it in and hide but, it. But you know what? Like, we're Maui people now, and this is what we do. And this is what we've always wanted to do. But we've just been too scared, We've been guys. too scared to do like, it. There are things that scare us. <laughs> right. And so we're going to be talking about money and power and sex and relationships. And we're going to be doing it in a private group that we're going to be setting up. And so if this is something that you're interested in being a part of, like, this is absolutely, positively not Facebook approved. This is not stuff that we could post on our timeline. This is just, this is for people who really want to take their relationship to the next level. Yeah. I mean, that's what this is for. This is for people who, who truly want to have the absolute best relationship possible with their significant other, with their mm -hmm. spouse, or people who are seeking an incredible relationship but not really sure where to find it or how to find it. Right. I mean... We come from just such different backgrounds, but I'm telling you right now, like, you are incredible. You are amazing. My relationship with you is, is sublime. <laughs> That's so cool. It is so amazing. And we want other people to have this. Yeah, this is, this is, I manifested him into my life. Like, I don't tell many people that, but I really did. Like, mm -hmm. I was so intentional about who I wanted in a partner. And, yeah. and we constantly are setting intentions with each other as a couple. You know, sorry, a little secret giveaway there. But, you know, it's just... Yeah, we create we, each we, other. We, we create our image of each other. And it's really fantastic. Mm -hmm. And we just... We use all of our spiritual Jedi mind tricky skills in order to be able to create a beautiful relationship with each other. And we just want to teach you how to do it too. Yeah. Because, you know, we have seen <clears throat> a lot of people 
who have come into contact with us, like within just shortly meeting us, yeah, they they get or like. Remember when I came to Oregon to talk to my sister? Actually, she had married. She met the man she then later married. That's true. That yeah. happened. Yeah, but because she was able to kind of like be in our energy, she hadn't decided she wanted to marry him until after she had like it, until she's met us, she until met she saw us. us, and the way that we interact. Yeah, because it's powerful. Like. Just the way that we are as a couple inspires other people to to take their relationship just to the next level. And, and I get it all the time from people who I am around. They say that their relationships are better because of the way that they watch that I treat my wife. Yeah, and he treats me so well, guys. <laughs> like, I had, I had a whole lot of shitheads that I was dealing with before, but it was because of unhealed stuff within myself mm -hmm. that I needed to address and look at right. before I could bring him into my world and actually have him stay and, you know, be able to live a, a happy life together, mm -hmm. you know, because when you have relationship issues like I did, there was some part of me that felt like I didn't deserve to have a healthy relationship, a healthy mm -hmm. dynamic because of past traumas, past abuse, past things that I just had taken on as truth and, and as absolute truth for me. So I just, I just want to give you all the opportunity to up-level your relationship and you know and if you don't have a relationship get ready for one because you totally need to get ready for one if you want to actually wanna have, have a good one yeah you know there you could just go meet people on tinder or find people on okcupid but that's not going to be the same as like consciously paving the way for one to pop into your life mm -hmm. you know god helps those who helps themselves and I feel like being able to pave the energy for yourself is helping yourself to be able to recognize it when God puts it in front of your face or like to, to know that that person is the one for you because you know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the benefits of having a good relationship are just so numerous and they, they just, they branch out in every single aspect of life. I am so much more confident now because of how you love me. And the things that I've been able to do in this world are unbelievable. I have achieved heights that I never even imagined. Like this woman has unlocked areas of my heart that I didn't know could be unlocked. She has taken me places that I didn't know exist. <laughs> because we're so intentional about how we have our relationship. And we, there's just some specific things we do, and right. I, I want to share that stuff with you. It's, yeah. it's a little too in-depth for a Facebook post, but it's just, it's, it's available. And these are tools that you can use in your life and in mm -hmm. your relationships and, and ways that you can love each other better. Right. And the result is that it becomes so much easier to live your dreams. It becomes so much easier to have absolutely everything that you want in life. And it all starts with just having some support. And, and like, the, I mean, you are so supportive of everything I do. I mean, she trusts me absolutely. And, and like, that scared me at the beginning. I mean, honestly, I had no idea that I was worth somebody like her. Really, I had some serious self-worth issues. So and she, did I. And so did she. And man, it's like... And together we have just rubbed off, rubbed off on each other, other and and rubbed off the rough edges yeah through our ability to have the kind of relationship we do you know mm -hmm. where we we really are pretty unconditionally supportive right and, and we want everybody to be able to experience that unconditional love i've met so many people who are jaded with their relationship or they're in a relationship and they're feeling really disempowered or victimized or don't want to get married don't want know? to get married there is so much out there of people feeling like they can't have a successful marriage because, right. you know, the divorce statistics are 50% or whatever. Yeah. You know, and they use that as a freaking reason to not get married and not, not experience love. And it's so sad. It it's is. It's so sad because they're missing out on such a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're just announcing it. We're going to have a group where we talk about this stuff. And if you're interested in this group, why don't you just leave a comment? Because we want to talk to you. And we'll be talking more about this as time goes on. And I promise we're not going to be talking about this stuff on our Facebook feeds.
because it is not appropriate for general consumption. <laughs> no. You need to opt into this information. You need to opt in with money because we need you to value this and really hold mm -hmm. the space and not just have... We talked about making this a free group and we realized that this can't be a free group. This is just too in-depth. Right. This is too vulnerable. This is too intimate yep. to be able to do safely and, and with respect for everyone involved yeah. uh, on public Facebook groups. You know? Right. It just doesn't work. Yeah. And we want you to be able to experience these type of results and, and to be able to, to talk to us about it candidly and to talk to other people about it. And you know that you're not just you're not just talking to a group of random strangers who kind of pop in every now and then. We are creating a very intentional container for this. Container for this. Yeah. And so more details to come, but I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be really exciting. Honestly, like we're pretty intense people and we were a little bit scared to let this out in the world. So you better watch out if you're interested in this one, because uh, there is going to be serious, serious ramifications on the quality of the people that you have in your life as a result of it. Yeah, that's all I got. I think we should end this. What's happening guys? Paul Roy here, pauljroy.com. I am back from China and as promised, here is a video of my crazy trip. So it was actually a lot more uh, entertaining than I thought it would be because I went to uh, Philippines, China, got deported from China, over to Hong Kong unexpectedly, back into China, back over to the Philippines, and back home. So here's the story. Enjoy. So I thought I was going to China two weeks from now, but then my boss handed me a, uh, an itinerary as I was leaving work and he said, go get your toothbrush and your passport, you're going to China in like 12 hours. So I wasn't nearly as prepared for this trip as I normally do for an international trip. First, uh, first stop was Manila, which was about 11 and a half hours away by airplane. And the really cool thing about this is that you cross the international date line, so you arrive the day prior. So I'm like a time traveler, which was pretty cool. Manila is a very crowded city. It is the most population dense city on earth. Uh, Wikipedia says there's about one and a half million people living there. I think that's a joke. There are so many people living here, they're like on top of each other. It's nuts. Um, but it's a pretty neat spot. I got to uh, hang around and mainly saw cabs and hotels there. And what I saw of the traffic made me very, very, very grateful that I didn't have to be driving in it. I swear, people in the Philippines have no regard whatsoever for their lives or the lives of the people around them. Holy crap, these people drive crazy. The next morning, I had to go into uh, China, and so I did. But China turned out to be quite the huge adventure, and I'll let me talk, you, talk to you about it right now. One does not simply walk into China. Oh no, you need a visa to do that. So I am officially getting booted out of my very first country. God knows that I've had plenty of countries in the past that I deserve to get booted out of. But this is actually the first one. So they're making me buy a ticket to Hong Kong. So I get to go be like a Pacific jet setter, like a Pacific Rim jet setter. Um, they just sort of drop me. Oh, and here they are, gotta go. All right, peeps, the saga continues. So it was either spend a night in Chinese immigration jail or spend 230 bucks on a ticket to Hong Kong. Um, I picked ticket to Hong Kong because that was the smart thing to pick. So actually, the, um, the customs people were super friendly. They went and bought me a ticket to Hong Kong because they wouldn't take, um, they wouldn't take my US dollars and I just didn't have time to change anything into uh, Chinese uh, yuan. So um, yeah, so the customs folks actually bought me a ticket to Hong Kong and then I, I handed them cash because I just had a pocket full of hondos. Very last plane out of uh, China tonight over to Hong Kong. Yeah. Anyway, when I get to Hong Kong, I'll be able to get back to China because, well, then I'll be, then I'll be transmigrant again. I'll be coming in from Hong Kong and going out through Manila. So the visa that I thought would work the first time will now actually work. I just had to like fly to a totally different country because 
that's just how life goes sometimes. Anyway, I'm running on pure adrenaline right now, and they're having a, probably a better time than any man who just got kicked out of a country ought to be having. But um, yeah, so this is the, the continuing saga of adventures jet-setting around the Pacific Rim. That's all I got. We'll see. Oh yeah, and the plane's delayed because of heavy fog, so it might be a really, really bumpy ride. All right, guys. Well, this is how we roll in China. Yeah, taking off some thick fog. This ought to be exciting. All righty. Like the cars, this really snazzy glass up there. And since I paid a hundred bucks, I might as well ride the ride, right? So I'm going up to the twentieth floor. There's some more Hong Kong. Much better view. Really foggy, that's not actually light, that's fog. You can't hardly see through the city. And we're back. Now we're going down. See, the cars are all on the wrong side of the road, thanks to uh, Great British influence. Man, this thing goes down a lot faster than it goes up. Lots of buses over there. And here we are. Okay, heading to China for round two. This ought to be fun. So uh, Hong Kong was an interesting experience. All of the, like, 20 minutes that I saw of it. Uh, when I was getting booted out of China, I talked to my guard extensively for probably about three hours while he was making sure that I was going to get on the airplane and leave. And um, it was just, it was really fascinating to talk to him about all the opportunities that he doesn't have that I just take for granted. Uh, for example, I have the opportunity to, to choose my profession. I have the opportunity to choose what I want to do for a living. I have the opportunity to choose like what kind of food I want to eat. I have the opportunity to choose what kind of hobbies I want to have. And when I was talking to this gentleman, man, it was like these were totally foreign concepts to him. He wasn't even aware that, that you could live that way, that you could be that way, that you could live a fulfilled life. So it, was, it really made me really grateful for, for what I have, for where I live, for the opportunities that have been given to me that, uh, that just haven't been given to everybody else in the world. And, and coming to Hong Kong is just a whole different world from Shanghai. Okay, so China, round two. And now I'm actually doing the thing that I came here to do, which was to inspect a factory for a uh, subcontractor that we're working with. So yeah, this is, all the, this is the reason that I actually went to China, was to play with countertops and make sure that these guys are doing their thing correctly. Lots of interesting architecture in Shanghai, which I thought was really neat. Very, uh, very modern city. My driver tells me that the majority of Shanghai has been built in the last 15 years or so, which explains why it has such a, a modern and even futuristic look to it. It's pretty cool. There's a couple things that I really don't understand there, like why on earth they have windows on the superhighway. Like, what, are they trying to catch a breeze or something? I don't get it. But uh, all in all, really interesting trip to Shanghai and on the way out, I figured I would do at least one touristy thing, so instead of having my driver drop me off at the airport, I had him drop me off at the Maglev station. So, here's that fun adventure. But I'm looking forward to going on a maglev. I know how they work. I've never been on one. It's a maglev track. This is the Shanghai maglev. They take it over to the airport. Supposedly it goes really fast. All right, we're riding the maglev train out of the station. It's as smooth as expected. 
Let's see how fast this sucker goes. Moving right along, about 50 kilometers an hour.
What's up guys? This is Manila. I'm on the rooftop patio of the uh, Hotel Maranti, about 11 stories up. They have this incredibly safe looking piece of glass between me and uh, certain death, which is kind of neat. So happy, look at this thing. It's like, it's so secure. You can just like wiggle it around. I wonder if that thing meets safety code. Probably not. Anyway, Manila is a neat, uh, a neat city, but best experience from way the heck above it, man. I, I swear, the people here on the roads have no regard whatsoever for their own lives. This is uh, a fairly, this is traffic that's much crazier than anything I ever experienced in Central America. Ah, see a lot of jeepneys down here. A jeepney is like a, a jeep that's kind of on rails. It's like a, a stretch limousine of a jeep. Seats uh, probably about 14 people skyscrapers as far as the eye can see. Let's just walk over on the other side of this uh, little patio. Another uh, another glass thingy. It's, it's so secure. <laughs> yeah, don't get drunk and fall off of this balcony. You're gonna die. Anyway, a lot of construction here, a lot of growth, lots of population density. Infinity pool, that's a cool little feature. A lot of people smoke here, but this hotel is non-smoking completely. Got a um, employee over there. We've got a, uh, a wonderful cart for brooms and other garbage. So that's probably a feature, right? And we'll go over here to this side. Now you know what, let's go up. We'll go up. Ow, ow, I almost biffed it. That hurt. All right, so now I'm like three feet higher with a crazy good scrape on my elbow. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's the, uh, another one of those super safe glass railings. So yeah, glad to be in Manila. Really interesting town. Huge, dense, populous, and uh, there's lots of uh, lots of stuff going on here. I leave for Honolulu at about 4 p.m. and I arrive at 9 a.m. on the same day. So I'll be seeing my wife a little bit earlier this morning. Be really cool. See you guys later. Okay. That you had planned. Let's talk. We're just going to talk about exactly the stuff we were just talking about before. Okay. Just about medicine and the reason why we're sharing all of the stuff that we're sharing, that we're going to be sharing, that, that we want to share with people. Mm -hmm. It's because this medicine and stuff that we have found in ourselves and in God, yeah. that really, really hurts to disobey God. <laughs> It does. It sucks. It sucks to not say this. It sucks to be silent. It really does suck to be silent because, like, whenever I see people who are dealing with something that I know that I've moved through or that I've gotten through, mm -hmm. I feel like I have to hold, I've felt like I've had to hold my tongue and, like, not share. Right. And, you know, that's damn well killed me. <laughs> I, I firmly believe that, you know, there's no, there's no, uh, it's no coincidence when I get sick. Right. It there's, isn't. There's illness, but there's also spiritual illness too. Mm hmm And not sharing definitely causes lethargy and malaise in my body. It does. It does. It's like the message is in and it has to come out. And if it doesn't come out, it comes out in weird ways. And it comes out in self-destructive ways. Yeah. We have to say this stuff. Right. Yeah. It's part of our spiritual journey personally for each of us. That's why we have to share this stuff. Yeah. Because it's part of how we grow. Mm hmm I don't... I don't know half the stuff that I say until it comes out of my mouth and I listen to it later and I'm like, huh. That was insightful. Right. <laughs> I don't think this stuff up, it just comes out. 
Yeah. It's just been in the it's it's been in the mental washing machine, just sort of churning around in my brain over and over and over until eventually it comes out my mouth and I'm like, huh. Well that was really neat. Wow. I benefit from that a lot. Mm -hmm. oh. Too. I'm so glad that we're doing this. Doing what? That we're making these videos. I'm so it's glad. It's growing our relationship. Oh, our relationship has gotten nothing but better. It was incredible to start with, and now it's like just stratospheric, out of this world awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How we just like face the world as a unit now, even more than we did before, and, and we were a powerhouse before. Mm -hmm. And now we're just like a juggernaut. Nothing is standing in our way. It is, it is insane. Powerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean insane in the most, the most it's like, like positive, joyous, joyous, positive way, way yeah. of like complete unreality. <laughs> that we get to live in. Mm -hmm. And the power of love, holy damn. Right. Yeah, and not just like the feeling that's between you and me, between our hearts, but like just the way that we interact with the world. Oh yeah, we show up in each moment with love so much. Yeah, I mean just random people that we meet. Like, oh, I'm gonna love you now, oh, I'm gonna love you we now. We find everything immediately lovable. Yeah, we do. Except for when we don't. Except for when we don't. And we, then we just don't align with it. But right. I notice how all the things that are in my path are things that I love. And anything that is unlike love just doesn't seem to be around me. Right. It can be in the periphery of you. It's sort of orbiting around, but it never but comes in. But it never in. comes in contact with me. It's right. like I have this like energetic barrier. You know, my, my aura is super strong. Yeah. Oh. And uh, I can... I, I just feel it. <laughs> like people move out of my way. They do. <laughs> I mean, you at the grocery store today, like it was like Moses parting the Red Sea. I'm, I'm telling you, she was just like, Poof. people are just like moving out of her way as she's just doing her business. I didn't even notice. I know because it, as far as you're concerned, there's just nobody even in your world. You're just like, I'm alone in the grocery store. There's nobody even in my aisle. And everybody else is just in the other aisles huddling. And they're like, what in the hell? Just walked in here. <laughs> yeah. It's great. It was so fun. It was like you could tell that there were three types of people in the grocery store. There was there was the the locals, there was the tourists, and then there was you. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fun. I'm gonna move this camera closer because it's like we are talking from like way far away. There we go. Look, we've gotten bigger. I don't even know if we're putting this one on the internet. You're such a performer. It's so cute. Yeah. I love that about you. Thank you. It's fun. It's entertaining to put on a different personality. I know. That's why we, it's fun to make videos. You know, it's just, I don't know. I, I always have really good conversations with you and I feel like I am like one of the privileged people in the world to be able to like have witty discourse with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, it's just cool to be able to share it with other people because I don't know, I think smart people really like us. <laughs> Maybe. They already do. Everybody's like receiving it so well. Everybody's that's, just receiving all true. the stuff we're saying so well. Are we they? have not gotten a single person being like, Nye. Yeah, because that person was like, if I say, Nye, they might actually start making fun of me. And I don't think I could handle that. My ego could not handle that. Yeah, you do not want to fuck with us. <laughs> you do not want to fuck with us. We are so good at just like flipping it around. <laughs> And yeah. just like being able to be balanced in our power. Yeah. Oh, that brings if up. Anybody tries to like get one over on us. It's just like, nope. Nope. Not going to happen. <laughs> because we judo. wield the power of God. I shit you not. <laughs> this man 
I have seen him like, I just watch you with other people in positions of authority and I just, I like bow. <laughs> I'm just like this man embodies like this energy of the Sultan. Like you, you are just the Sultan who just like, because of your love of God and your love of people mm -hmm. and because just of how much strength and faith you have, it holds you in the utmost of powerful positions. Thank you. Because you have God behind you. Yeah. With every decision you make. With every, every decision. Make, and every conversation you have. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I just see like this, this just like posture that you don't even try for. It's just because God's with you and God, you have confidence in God. Yep. And you have faith and certainty in God. And that's what gives him this tremendous, tremendous. Yeah. Tremendous strength, strength. And, and power and certainty and just, just watching you handle your life is really inspiring. <laughs> Thank you, love. You've taught me so much about how to like stand in the world. I mean, you gotta stand up for yourself because nobody else is gonna stand up for you. But the thing is that... No, the thing is, is once you stand up for you, other people stand up for you. Yeah, they do. Other people... But if you shit on yourself, other people shit all yeah. over you. <laughs> so stop shitting on yourself. Right. Okay, so, so I was in the store the other day. And, and, I, and this lady was standing in my way, so I walked up to her and said, excuse me. And she said, I'm sorry. And I said, you don't have to apologize just for existing. <laughs> you literally said this to some random stranger. To some random stranger. <laughs> because you know what? She doesn't have to apologize just for existing. There's nothing to be sorry about. You're just in my way. Excuse me, please. Please move your body a little bit to the left so that I don't like brush past you as I go by and make you uncomfortable. This is for your benefit. Like, it wouldn't bother me. I know it's coming. But you, you might be surprised. <laughs> so if I just say, excuse me, please. And all I expect is for you just to notice that I exist and move out of the way. Or notice that I exist and don't move out of the way. And then I brush past you and it's still okay. Either way, there's nothing to be sorry about. Believe me. So if, it, if you're the sort of person who says, I'm sorry, every time somebody says, excuse me, stop that bullshit. And just say, oh, okay, let me move out of your way. Not, not, oh, I'm sorry. I can't believe that I stood in the space that you want to occupy. Oh, <laughs> hurts me so bad. <laughs> Man, my mama raised me better than to exist. <laughs> <laughs> the shit you say sometimes. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, uh. Oh, no. oh, we got to tell the story about the landlords. Okay, so Katharina and I are shopping for landlords right now. We're kind of shopping for a place to live, but really we're shopping for landlords because we put up with like landlords of all different types and we know what we like and what we don't like. And so Katharina found like three places that we would like to go live at. And she beautiful sent homes. Beautiful, beautiful homes. Beautiful homes. And she sent all of them the same exact email. And she's like, hi, you know, I'm Katharina and we're interested in talking about your home, please give me a call at this number so we can discuss the details of your home. Really simple. Sent it. One of the person, one of the people, they didn't respond to us and we're like, oh, okay, no problem. You don't want to rent to us. Not a big deal. The other person called us like we asked and was professional and polite. But the third person, oh, the third person, the third person sent us this discombobulated jarbled text message where they're just interrogating us and they're like, well, what's your income? And send me pictures of yourself. And, and I want to run a credit check. And I'm going to run a credit check on you. And, and you know, where do you work? And how much money do you earn? And do you have tax returns? And can you prove that you live on Maui? And are you residents? And I looked at this, this shit. This litany. This little litany. And I was like, I'm not going to play by your games. I'm the guy with the money. You're the guy with the house. You're the guy with the bills who needs them to get paid. I'm the guy who wants to pay your bills. You can go jump in a hole. <laughs> And so I just sent him back something that said, I said, thank you so much for your response, but I also screened my landlord and I would prefer it. I would prefer to have a landlord who just called me like we politely requested. And because you didn't do that, we don't want you as a landlord. Thank you. I hope you find a tenant for your home. And then he sends back this text <laughs> message saying, what? What? What's wrong with you? I do this with everybody and none of them have complained. And so I just said, one of those people is your ideal tenant who good likes, luck. good luck. Good luck. That person, has, that person likes your management style. 
that's the person who you're going to get along with. You're not going to get along with me. Believe me, if you're already making me um, not like you a lot from the very first exchange, <laughs> you're definitely not going to like it. Let me tell you, Katharina and I are great tenants. We take care of places. They look nicer when we leave than when we go in. We pay our rent on time, all the, all time. the time. We do not drink. We do not party. We do not, do not smoke. We do not smoke. We do not have pets. We are incredible tenants that anybody would be lucky to have. So I simply stood in my own power and said, I'm not going to subordinate myself to you. It is totally acceptable for a, for a, a but landlord. You didn't say that. I will not subordinate myself to you. No, I said that in my head. Yeah. I said that in my head. But it's important to talk about the conversation you're having right. in your head because that is. That's the conversation you that eventually you have. Will have, yes. Yeah. Because you're w not willing to, like, submit in that way. Like, you're mm -hmm. willing to stand in your own power and your own sovereignty right. and just say, hey, yo, I'm standing up for myself. Right. There is a totally appropriate time to run a credit check on a prospective tenant and to pre-screen them. That happens during the initial phone call. First, you talk to them and you find out if they're an articulate speaker and if they are the sort of person who can afford the $3,500 a month that this dude wants for this particular home. That's what you do. And then you ask them casual questions like, oh, so what do you do for a living? Oh, how long have you been on Hawaii? And you fill out your, your list of, of due diligence questions. I'm not saying that this guy trying to do his due diligence was wrong. It was perfectly acceptable, but the way that he did it made me feel like crap. I don't want to do business with a landlord that makes me feel like crap. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do a business with a landlord who is so unconscious that they just send me a text message that's like, send me your W-2s. Oh, of course, I'm going to do that. With a whole bunch of typos. And right, with a bunch like of typos. Names. And he, he spells the word you with just a U. And I'm like, no. No, we're not going to get along. And, and I'm going to do you a favor and tell you that we're not going to get along instead of just ignoring you. I'm not going to passive aggressively ignore, ignore you. And I'm not going to aggressive aggressively tell you that you're a dipshit. I'm going to politely tell you why I'm not doing business with you so that in future you can do business with somebody who actually wants to do business with you. Duh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's how you stand in your personal power. Don't have to be a jerk about it. Honestly, I love the guy. Or girl, whatever it was. I don't even know who this was who text message. Because they didn't even say that what their name was. They just said, what's your name? What's your date of birth? How many people? Are you a part of yours? You don't drink, do you? <laughs> um, you need a copy of How to Win Friends and Influence People. I'm, where's your address? I will send you the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. But my, I, didn't, I didn't respond to him from a, from a place of being angry about it. I responded to him from a place of, of legitimately wanting this person to understand what they had done that had lost them the business. And I think that's really where the difference is. Because I wanted this person to really get it. Like, hey, you, you did in fact lose our business. We don't care how nice of a place you have or how good of a value it is. We care that that you, you treated me in this way that I thought was abrasive and, and brusque. And, uh, and, and I want you to have somebody as your client who is willing to accept that. But I'm not willing to accept that. And think that I'm an asshole if you want to. That's totally cool with me. You can hate me all you want. But in the end, I did the guy a favor. Well, I think that's... Remember that one time that we had that really, really, really shitty pad tie? in Kaneohe, and yeah. we didn't like tell them it was disgusting. Yeah. It tasted like ketchup on glass noodles. It was nasty. It was nasty. Yeah, we had a terrible restaurant experience, and we didn't say anything, and we smiled, and, 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 just, and just put up with it. And just paid the $40 for get, terrible, for terrible, terrible, terrible food. food. And, uh, and we learned something from that that day. We learned that we did them a disservice by not telling them. Mm -hmm. Remember? So ever since then, you and I have been pretty deliberate about right. speaking up for our needs as service people. We have. In fact, I know that I've gone to restaurants. Remember we went to Oahe Island Grill after that? Mm -hmm. And the, the food was amazing and the, their Thai iced coffee was crappy. And I said, the food is amazing. The Thai iced coffee was crap. I don't need it taken off the bill. I'm not trying to not pay for it. But seriously, letting you, know. letting you know this tastes like shit. The rest of the meal tastes amazing. <laughs> I don't think you actually said crap, but <laughs> I didn't. I, I just said I didn't like the. I didn't, I didn't like, like this. this. I did like this. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, take it for what it is. And, right. And, you know, and we're just advocating for yourself. What right, we advocating for ourselves, and at the same time, let the restaurant owner know in a polite way that that uh, that something wasn't up to our spec specifications. If they had wanted to pull it off the bill, I wouldn't have said no. But I didn't ask either because I drank it all. Yeah. I didn't think it was bad enough that I returned it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, oh, pour this in this thing. <laughs> this tastes like crap. <laughs> no, I drank it. I drank it with my meal. Yeah. So I feel kind of complete on this topic. Uh, do you have anything else you wanted to say? No, this has been fun 17 minutes and 48 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> All right, we'll just turn it off then. Oh, tomorrow. Okay, so let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, one of our uh, one of our Facebook friends actually asked us a question. This was in regards to our last video, which was about about sexual self acceptance, and she said, "Yeah, it was about kinky sex. It was the one about kinky sex that we did. Yeah, and sexual self acceptance too. But yeah, I, one of them. <laughs> one of them. Anyway, it was Watch one them of them. Both are great. Yeah. Anyway." But, uh, but she, she brought up a really valid point, and she said, what if, what if your sexual fantasies involve something like pedophilia or rape? <gasps> Gasp. And yeah, we're going to talk yeah, about yes. that. Yeah. We are totally going to talk about that in our next video, which is, should be due out tomorrow if the internet cooperates. We, we kind of live out in the country, and so we're working on faster internet. At 1994 we, speeds. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, like, yeah we're, we're at like 56K right now. Yeah, so. I go to the library to use the internet. I don't like this at all. I mean, it, it's changing soon, guys. It's changing soon. But uh, so anyways, we might be on a slightly sporadic schedule, but we do make one video every day and they don't, just don't always show up every day. <laughs> Depends on how many people are Netflixing and chilling at any given moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the Netflix that does it, not the chill. <laughs> <laughs> if everybody was chilling, then everybody, the right. internet would be all free. Right. Up. If the internet was, yeah, if everybody was chilling, the internet would be free. <laughs> But yeah, we're on like a party you know, line. You know what's so great, Paul? Now that we've like publicly talked about sex on, on Facebook, now we can make all of our funny innuendos that we always make. We can! Yay! Yay! We make the best sex jokes, guys. Like we really do. We do. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we'll be answering that person's question about pedophilia and um, what was the other one? Incest or something? No. Pedophilia or... And um, rape. And rape. Yeah, we'll be talking about pedophilia and rape. Like... Serious topics. Yes. But we're going to be talking about But we're going to talk about that anyways. <laughs> right. Yeah. We do not condone pedophilia or rape. Yeah. That's let, our let, disclaimer. Let... Disclaimer. We do not condone pedophilia no, or rape. No. Not at all. Serious face. But we're still going to talk about yeah, it. We're still going to talk about <laughs> it. We're still going to talk it's about it. It's important to talk about it. Because it's important and because there are so many people who suffer with these feelings that they have that they, they want to you know go have sex with children and slash rape people and they don't understand what these feelings mean. Right. We're going to talk about we're going what to talk about we it. think those feelings mean. Yeah, we're going to talk about our take on it. And, and our experience with it. Okay. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, alrighty then. Alrighty then. If you also, have, yeah, if you have any questions for us. Yeah, please. Please, ask uh, them. Ask them. Put ask them in them. the comments below and we will make videos about them because... Right. Because we yeah, like we, to. We like to. And, it's fun. Right. And we we hadn't even thought about talking about pedophilia or rape on our Facebook feed. Ever. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but we will but because it came, up. it came up. And yeah, we totally are interested in answering your questions. Also, we have our private group where we our talk. private re exclusive relationship it, club. Yeah. Money, it's so private. Power, sex. It's all about money, do, power, do, sex. Do, 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 yeah. These videos are pretty much about us. Yeah. The stuff we do in those groups is about you yeah, and, your and your relationships. Relationship. So if your relationship is worth like a dollar a day, right? Then then we got a thing for you. Yeah, we have a thing for you. If you want to like get some conversation with us, yeah, in the group, because we um, for for obvious reasons we're not going to have a conversation with you on our public Facebook feed because that's like that's weird no and good. Yeah, that's that's I would not wish that for you. Right. So I don't wish that for your your mothers and your cousins and family right, like, members to see. You were tagged in a post. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're comfortable like being freaky and like out there, but we. We no, totally understand I'm, that you're totally not. We totally understand that you're not. So right. yes, we're we are shining our beacon of freaky, <laughs> so you can come into our group 
and talk about your stuff there because it's right. it's really helpful to talk about and mm -hmm. work through your shame around the stuff that we are talking about with the money, power, and sex. Mm -hmm. Like that is our jam. We really want to share this information that has made our relationship so awesome with you. Mm -hmm. I've I've shared with many people over the years about how to like have a better relationship with themselves, with mm -hmm. each other, with their family members. Like I am. I'm a relationship guru over here, okay? So like, I want- On top I of want, a mountain and everything. Yeah, I, I want 